The advice you currently hear on everyone's lips these days is to go through your world twice and to read through first aid twice. I do not regard this as very good advice at all. The problem with it is, it doesn't really assess at what point a person is in their learning. It is not equally good advice for every single stage of a person's preparation. What's more, is it doesn't resolve any issue in regards to explaining why it is a person should be doing something. It thus does not really justify itself at all. Instead, here is the advice I give to you, which is very different from what most people will tell you, but I believe I can support this much better. Essentially, first and foremost, you want to start off by forming a memory palace, or rather, memory, multiple memory palaces for the various subjects you'll be dealing with. You can do this fairly effectively using Sketchy. It is not the only way to do it, but it's a pretty good service. After that point, you should focus upon iterations, going through the material multiple times over, starting with a general outline. Now, you can do this using various video, um, various YouTube videos. I will actually mention a few good ones. Um, but in addition to that, uh, you can just do it by reading through first aid the first time through just to get a general idea of it rather than to memorize every single detail. But what you want to focus is upon multi multiple iterations and increasingly acquiring more and more details while reinforcing the original learning. The purpose of UWorld is not really so much to teach you the material. It is not efficient at doing that. You will have many blocks of text dealing with one single piece of information, as opposed to first aid, which can render the same information in only a sentence or two. We can thus say, essentially objectively, that first aid is much more efficient at teaching you something than UWorld is. That is not to say UWorld is not without its value. It helps to practice, uh, to give you a source of practice for the timing of the test. But its chief value, I would argue, really consists in its ability to help you t uh, to help you figure out yourself what sort of questions will actually be asked. Fundamentally, the things which are tested on step is essentially anything which a complex question may be written out of. Things which are simple and can be spoken in more or less one line, and the entirety of the matter summarized in that, are probably not going to have a question made out of them, and therefore those things are such matters as maybe more or less safely ignored. Um, but basically, essentially, the value of UWorld is to learn how to think like a test taker. And if you are familiar enough with UWorld that you more or less have seen all the general types of questions there, at that point, you shouldn't try to go through it multiple times or memorize every single question, for indeed, such things, such questions, and also the NBME questions, are not going to actually appear on your step exam. They don't put them in there or anything like that. The better thing to do is to be familiar with the underlying material. If you know how to think like a test taker having taken a number of you will, um, if you know how to think like a test maker having taken a number of you world questions, um, at that point, return to your first aid studies and use that knowledge in order to highlight selectively upon your second go through the first aid or third go through it what sort of information is most essential, what you will actually will need to know. Because although it is true that by and large first aid at first appearance does seem to be such a resource where everything is high yield, the reality is you are not equally likely to be tested upon everything you see in there. Generally speaking, for every page of first aid, you will probably be able to reduce it down to two, maybe three things that you highlight and might I points. And at that, might I say, you do not even, nor should you, highlight the entirety of it, the entirety of a sentence. Usually, there are just some key phrases. Once you have done that, you'll be much more able to effectively zoom into the particular phrase. You will absorb more or less the material around it, and you'll be able to read through it by jumping to phrase and phrase and phrase. Um, this actually will help speed up your reading uh, quite a bit. So, this is basically a rough summary of matters. I guess I will conclude by saying, for this too long didn't read <laughs> summary, I will conclude by saying that the purpose, I believe, of the NBME is not to quite teach yourself, um, teach yourself any of the information for the step.
uh, the real purpose of it is to essentially from I would recommend three exams you take and this can include um, a U world practice exams to form a sort of average because as a matter of a general statistical rule you are probably going to score plus or minus 10 points from whatever you on average are scoring on your practice exams as a result of this Taking three of them together allows you to more or less fairly accurately assess roughly where you are going to score. Not precisely, but all things having gone successfully during your exam date and no disasters having occur, you will probably score plus or minus 10 points of your average. That is the purpose, I believe, of the NBME. There are some various other points I would like to get into. But I would say then, do not take any NBMEs at the very start of your dedicated. There is little point to that. It doesn't effectively teach you anything. You should instead be taking those, um, those various tests once you are towards the end of your period. It's basically to help you predict roughly where you are going to score and if you need more time in dedicated. So, I have a lot more I can add to all this. But in summary, the best method to go about this is first and foremost to concentrate upon laying a strong foundation. This is so often skipped, but it is quite horrible to do so. Just because you happen to have more or less learned this stuff in the past two years does not mean it is very fresh in your mind and that you don't need to relay something, uh, uh, re replace something of a foundation. So in order to do this, as I've said, you can begin by creating memory palaces through looking through sketches. You can watch a number of fine enough uh, YouTube videos on the subject summarizing everything for you. But thereafter that, the only value really in UWorld in regards to what is most efficient is just to see that you're able to do it within a certain time and to also see um, that you are able to think like a test writer. And if you're able to do most of these things and you're able to take a block or two in um, all the subject areas and more or less be familiar with all the types of questions they ask, you really do not need any more out of UWorld. After that point, just concentrate on going through first aid uh, multiple times. First time, don't even highlight anything. But once you've gone through it the first time and have a fairly strong idea of what sort of things are going to be tested, etc. At that point, begin to highlight things. As for how many times to go through it, basically, once you more or less are familiar with everything there, and people can ask you questions from the text, and out of nowhere you're strangely able to answer it, you are probably more than prepared. And if you are scoring roughly where you need to, out of those three uh, NBME exams, you are probably ready to take the test at that point course I have a lot more I can tell you about all this but that's the most succinct summary of it I'm going to explain to you why I think certain things and various criticisms of various resources okay so I'd love to talk to you at length of uh, these various things and give you a nice thorough analysis but I also want to make sure that you actually sit through and read all this so to speak I also want to talk a bit about how to get through successfully not only the step exam but also medical school and pre-med. So as I have a lot to say, I'm probably going to try to say everything in as succinct a manner more or less as possible. I will add I'm not using any script, I just have a few points I wanted to make sure I said and so I wrote down things here or there. But basically I'm speaking off the cuff. Okay, so let's begin with the very first one, UWorld. UWorld is essentially something which is so highly hyped some people would possibly assert that you don't need any other resource than UWorld. There are very pro there's various problems with this uh, viewpoint. For one, UWorld is not truly actually the most accurate representation of what the exam actually is like. One of the things about UWorld is, is that it's often trying to trick you, when in reality, the step exam is not at all like that. By and large, it's fairly straightforward, and in fact, all my friends who have also taken the step exam have said more or less something similar things to the effect of that all the questions were fair however you want to formulate it there's something by way of a fundamental difference between UWorld questions and actual you know step questions 
you can actually see this difference reflected between what UWorld questions are like and what NBME questions are like. So on that level, there's a very obvious and fundamental difference between them. And if you want to know which one is more accurate, more reflective of the test, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, it's the NBME exam uh, questions. I did notice that when I looked at the practice exams in the NBME, some of them tended to be somewhat shorter and more laconic than the actual step exam. However, that having been said, by and large, the UWorld uh, questions were longer and rather more laborious than uh, the actual step exam was. So basically, UWorld is in fact not the most accurate representation of what the step exam is. It is, however, something that you can practice on, but it's not really an efficient usage of your time. As I believe I said earlier, on an objective level, if you think about learning through using it, there are two problems. One of them is, is that the standard advice you receive from people is to do it randomized and timed. As a result of this, you're essentially learning from random pieces of information rather than having a concrete piece of uh, information or subject presented to you. This is obviously not all that efficient, or if you will, not that high yield. It is m much better to have, in terms of forming initial connections, to have everything laid out uh, for you to begin with. And the thing of the matter is, is I don't entirely agree that the step exam is not, how do I put it, it is perhaps more random than it is non-random. But certain things make it appear at times somewhat non-random. You, for example, can have in one block maybe three anatomy questions concerning the pelvis, right? That kind of is a little bit non-random. And if you choose strictly randomized testing, well, it's kind of more random on the UWorld exam sometimes than it is on the actual uh, step exam. By and large, I'm not complaining about that one too much, though. Um... There are some things I should mention, and, uh, and for the interest of, in the interest of time, I'm, I'm, go I'm going to cut out a lot. But basically, first thing you should know, in regards to eye strain, obviously it is much better to be probably reading from a book like First Aid than it is to be looking, looking at UWorld. You may have thought, however, that you need to endure the bright glare of UWorld because it's training you for the test. I want to tell you, although I don't believe there is any option to turn down the brightness or anything, you do, however, have the option of clicking in the actual step exam to just go and see, you know, uh, inverting the palette to see a black background and white text, which is much better on your eyes. So if you are ever wondering, do I have the ability to do that in the actual exam, what I have the ability to do in UWorld? Yes, you do. I don't believe you have the ability to set it on sepia tones, which I think is an option in UWorld, but you do have the ability of inverting the palette, which is a very good idea to reduce eye strain. I have used, however, different techniques for the actual exam, and I'll get into that. Um, basically, though, they also allow you to bring an eye drop. Uh, you know, they allow you to bring eye drops, so there's that too. But essentially, the problem of UWorld is, is that it presents the same amount of information, more or less, you'll get in first aid, but it does so with blocks of text um, obfuscating it. That's for the information like itself in the question stem. And then you'll have many paragraphs sometimes of explanation. At the very least, you'll have a paragraph accompanying each wrong answer, which some people will tell you you need to read. And I will tell you, no, you really don't. Um, because it's really iteration which is most efficient. If you spend a lot of time looking through, um, I don't know, one particular section, and it takes you two to three weeks, maybe because you're doing things randomized, to ever have a piece of information presented to you again, that's really not going to be sufficient for keeping it very crystal clear in your head. So basically, do not stare intently at every single word. Do not, I mean, that basically at best aids emotional learning. I, I recognize that. But don't stare intently at every single wor word. It's just not very high yield, and don't read every wrong answer. When you're reviewing your answers, I recommend just to click on the wrong ones to be reviewed rather than to look through everything, because that takes a lot of time. When you do a block of questions, it's like, what, an hour, 40 minutes, maybe something like that? Um, 
but when you're reviewing it it standardly takes like two to four hours everyone says so it's not just me you take way longer to review the stuff than to actually do it so don't look through everything because it ends up taxing your eyes a lot that's one of the problems with all this you have to deal with actual stamina actual energy physical things like that in the real world so don't exhaust your eyes looking through huge amounts of text when you don't have to instead just go ahead and um, read the same amount of material read the same amount of actual useful information in first aid in just a few sentences it's way better uh, some people may say something about a obscure condition or anything like that I swear to you that all of the stuff that I saw in my uh, first aid exam sorry on my step exam for the most part it was all in first aid and if there is some obscure condition which is not mentioned in first aid most probably you can probably get it right by excluding all the wrong answers that is part of knowing how to do the step exam well it's not just a matter of knowing the fir uh, the correct answer though although that would be ideal it's also a matter of just being able to exclude wrong answers and if you can get it down to two choices that's like a 50 50 shot and if you happen to be quote unquote lucky about that <laughs> some people who are just really lucky with their 50 50 shots ended up scoring very well so basically your world is inefficient and the advice a bit about going through it um, randomized I also don't think is particularly good I think what you really need to do in order to understand what you know understand the material well what you can get out of you world is practice taking the test and familiarity with the kind of questions you'll face you do not need to memorize every single one of them if you go through section by section, non randomize section by section, and if you happen to be familiar with the sort of um, questions you're being asked, that's sufficient. You've learned all you need to. Um, usual advice here I'm going to give. Make sure you read the last sentence first because that gives you the question. That's what you actually need to answer. You don't need to waste time upon figuring out the diagnosis or whatever if that's not even being asked it also can be useful just to very quickly scan the answers to you know narrow down uh, what you're looking at but basically just go and skim the 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 text and avoid jumping necessarily to trigger words because they will sometimes try to trick you they're not really that bad about tricking you but sometimes they will um, I have seen a few questions on my step exam where they set up trigger words in the beginning which were directly refuted and the actual answer given in the middle of the text. So basically, don't be too quick to jump to triggers, uh, trigger words, which is a problem if you practice like heavily on UWorld, you might kind of become wired to act like that. And instead, I want you to realize they will sometimes have trigger words. Um, you know keywords whatever you want to say but often what they'll do is they'll describe those trigger words rather than actually using them so basically the only other thing that you can get I think from you world is you can get the actual um, visuals you know you can get various pictures which accompany it but you can get those even more efficiently I think from first aid <laughs> because you know right exactly where they are you don't have to wait for a question to come up so all in all it is not necessary to go through you world you don't have to go through it twice you don't have to go through it four times I, I don't need to teach you any tricks about that in case you're curious if you mark everything as you go through all the question bank once marking everything you can then review all the marked uh, ones after that you ask them to reset your count or whatever then you go through all of again marking all of it and then you go through the marked ones again because you can click an option and basically you have the ability to go through the entire question bank four times doing that not necessary in the slightest I strongly don't even recommend going through it once but if you're curious as to what average you should be hitting on that people sometimes tend to overly stress about correlation charts or whatever like you can see people talking about getting a 90 percent or an 80 percent or whatever who then got vastly different you know final results basically it's this if you're scoring like a 40 percent or something like that yeah that may be an issue but more or less if you're scoring i'd say a low bar would be 60s but if you're scoring like 70s or 80s or hell even 90 percent that's fine <laughs>
is, I think, a very much diminishing re uh, return for scoring above 90 on these. It could just be a matter of that it phrased it in a tricky way and you got that wrong. You don't need to stress out on that. Basically, if you're familiar with the sort of questions they ask, if you know what sort of things people will test you on, if you can think like a test writer, then that's all the information you need to be able to effectively study first aid. As for the time, I was always finishing just with, you know, some time left over, you know, maybe like a few seconds or something, or a little bit more, but like less than a minute. That was on UWorld. When I actually did the test, I usually found I had at least a minute or more left over. So to be honest, if you can roughly finish the 40 block in time, then you're good. You, you don't need to like stress about that. Um, let's see. Right. Timed or untimed. If you take it untimed, you know, in UWorld, you have more of a chance to go and read over everything and think about it carefully. I would say that that is bad. The thing of the matter is, is that if you actually know the material, you should fairly quickly be able to figure out all these questions on UWorld and uh, in the step exam. If you don't know it, UWorld is not the most efficient place to learn it. Go and learn it on first aid or use some YouTube video. And what's more, there are also, there's also a good lesson to be learned about cutting your losses. If you don't quite understand something, just click what is the most probable answer, or one of the most probable answers. Go back to it later, perhaps, to review it, but just move on. That is actually a good skill. So, for that reason as well, I recommend you take it timed. Don't take any of these untimed. It all ultimately, because I've done both. I actually spent a few months studying for all this, um, so I was able to try out all sorts of different uh, ways of doing things. So I have a pretty good amount of experience. Uh, I, I can really talk about all this from not only theory, but from experience. Taking it on time causes you to waste your time. Just take it timed. So the next thing I'll be addressing is first aid. Now what's the positive about it? For the most part it presents everything in a very efficient manner. Some people would say all of first aid is high yield. I would kind of agree. But they say because of that there's no purpose in highlighting it and I disagree with that. I'll get into that though. Another positive about it is it does not cause eye strain from the glare of the computer. And yes, you can do use things like f.lux, but still. It does not cause that sort of eye strain, so you can look at it for hours without getting the same problems as if you were looking at a computer. Um, however, once you've gone through it a number of times, and or once you actually fully appreciate the subject material and how to think like a you know test writer, you come to appreciate that it really isn't nearly as high yield as people think it is in the sense that you look at a given page you could you could probably more or less boil it down to two or three bulletin points and once you realize that and you highlight those bulletin points you can proceed to go through the entirety of the thing much quicker basically in the beginning it may take you a while but as you're approaching the test you should be able to go through the entirety of first aid in two to three days um, some positives about it also are the fact that it presents to you a lot of pictures, by and large, or at least those you need to really see, which is great, because that way, when you get tested on them in the step exam, you are able to recognize them. The weakness with Sketchy is, by and large, although it does sometimes show you pictures, and it does also sometimes play sounds, the problem is, is that it uh, is cartoons. As a result of that, it doesn't really necessarily reflect accurately how things work in real life. So you would not necessarily recognize the pictures. Usually, the pictures that they use in any given resource are the same, like giganticism or um, cretinism. You'll probably be shown the same picture you'll sh you're shown in any other book. Because of that, you can, for the most part, just memorize those pictures and you'll be fine. However, if you're worried about being tricked or them doing something like that, which it's possible they might, basically, if you understand why it is someone looks a certain way, and you can recognize the important features, the important distortions, whatever, then you'll be good. And if you learn pictures in that way, even if they change things around, you'll probably get the correct answer. So, 
uh, basically, I think those are the key things about first aid. I will just quickly inject some personal experience. I bought it, and I really never used it during medical school because I think I acquired it during the first break after term one or whatever, you know, the break after that. Um, they put a biochemistry slash genetic section in the beginning. I think it was like the longest section, and it was incredibly boring at the time. So I never really managed to get through that to get to all the other sections, which are actually fairly interesting. So my humble advice is, if you're finding the beginning boring, try jumping to another section. You may be pleasantly uh, surprised. <laughs> um, beyond that, do you need to get the very latest edition? No. People are so obsessed with missing this one little small question, which maybe they'd have if they use an extra resource or etc. To be honest, that's not probable. It is very low yield, these sorts of obscure conditions. For the most part, if you understand medicine and you're able to think and apply things well, you are probably going to get a fairly decent score on this exam. Um, so having said that, most of the questions are not going to be first order. They're more probably going to be second order. So I would recommend to you the way to approach these things is to be able to recognize the disorder. So learn what things are necessary to recognize that this is a particular disorder. And then the high yield thing is to learn the associations. So there. If moreover you understand why these things give rise to something, that's even better. But basically learn the associations and most of the time you'll know the answer to the question. I think perhaps the only other thing I want to add about this resource, because I'm trying to keep minimal here, is, is that the very first time you go through it, I don't particularly recommend trying to highlight anything or anything like that. Um, I instead just recommend reading the thing. The reason being is that you won't necessarily know in the very beginning what sort of questions you're going to be asked, so you don't really necessarily know what's high yield. Once you've gone through it once and you've learned the material and you've figured out what sort of things are asked for each section of the exam, using, for example, UWorld, at that point when you go to reread it, you're going to be a ver a very able to, very easily able to identify what information is high yield and what you really need to know. So just highlight it then. And you can also, I would recommend, if there's a section which is very important, like a chart of like nephrotic versus nephritic syndrome, just draw a line of marker down the side. Saves yourself the effort of highlighting everything. Basically, practice minimalism wherever you can. Don't highlight entire sentences if you can just get away with highlighting phrases. Um, I will show you something very quickly which is very useful. This is available online. I got it from Amazon.com, I believe. I think given the absence of hiragana and katakana, this is probably Chinese, I'm not certain. But anyway, these are, I think you can search erasable highlighters. I'm not getting paid or anything, but two is sufficient. And you can use one to like, if you have multiple pieces of information which are in close proximity, you can highlight one with one color and then for the next bit of information you highlight another with another. You can also do something where, like, this is information on the, te on the test, actually taking it, and this is information you use in the test, like some sort of key information about a cancer or something like that. So, two is sufficient, I would say, and I would say use more than one, because it actually helps to keep all the information distinct rather than it running together. During the second time through is when you do the um, highlighting and during the second time to through is also when I'd recommend writing on the book. Uh, usually I'm a bibliophile. I've been reading classics since I was little and all that. I have a lot of nice books and I keep them immaculate, but this is a case where it's alright to treat her roughly. So, write in any mnemonics you have and you ought to be able to easily think of a lot. Um, interesting stories, whatever you want to say. Um, I think it's Hasek. Um, I think he wrote a book, Mastering the Kanji, or something like that. He gave pretty good advice about mnemonics, just basically, they can be shocking, they can be, you know, politically incorrect, whatever, just whatever helps you remember it. And just to give a quick example off the top of my head, there's a drug called Orlistat. So, basically, it sounds like sort of oil or oily stat, which is a medical term, but you could also make a mnemonic out of stop, or oil stop. So, Orlistat, oily stop. Oily stop, 
So if you know what Eulerstat does, say oil, saying oil or oily, oil stop actually kind of makes a lot of sense and it helped me quickly learn it. Um, <laughs> there are actually a few mnemonics that I made with my, with my uh, brother and these mnemonics are not necessarily uh, always entirely polite ones. Um, <laughs> but interestingly enough, I mean, obviously, most of the mnemonics I made on my own because I'm the one studying. But interestingly enough, I actually got two questions right because of mnemonics my brother and I had made. So, <laughs> pretty cool. So definitely do them. And as you go through all these resources, you'll have the memory palaces continually call to mind. So you don't need to watch sketches over and over again. The mere fact that you think of them each time you happen to see uh, a particular piece of information that will be um, more than sufficient to help you recall it. And also, if you studied sketchy micro and sketchy farm, you will have most, though not all, of a large of two large sections of the book taken care of, the micro and the farm sections. Having said that, there are some, there are a few uh, microbial um, microorganisms that you know, sketchy micro doesn't get into. There are a few important side effects that sketchy farm doesn't, and a few drugs that sketchy farm doesn't get into. By and large, though, if you just learn sketchy farm, you basically have what you, sorry, if you just learn sketchy micro, you basically have what you need for a microbiology. If you learn sketchy farm, you basically have what you need for farm. Not entirely, but kind of. Sketchy pathology, I would not regard as sufficient. Anyway, I believe I've said all I need to about um, about first aid. When you go and review subsequently it, reading over the mnemonics you've made will very much help. And so far as possible, these uh, mnemonics should be relevant and if at all possible should make reference to the actual names or whatever of the condition. It just helps you remember them better. Like, or the stat and oil stop. If it were entirely something that sounded completely different, I would probably not remember it as well. The next resource I'll speak about is Pathoma. I would say that Pathoma is a fairly decent resource. You'll probably be watching it at 1.5 or 2 times speed. Um, however, having said that, it is not actually a necessary resource. If you go and watch various internet videos, if you go and read through first aid, you will definitely have all the information you need. The very first time you learn it in, I don't know, term 3 or term 4, whatever, of medical school, yeah, it's a, certainly is a fine uh, guide to have along. But ultimately, I mean, it's good that you have pictures that go along with it. Ultimately, it's not really necessary. Pathoma as a PDF is kind of a bit threadbare, which is not necessarily bad. But at the same time, I do believe that for the most part, everything you get in Pathomer, you get more or less just so as well in first aid. So basically, there are like a hundred or so videos in Pathoma, and it is fine enough to watch them once through, maybe twice. But the thing of the matter is, once you get really familiar with the subject matter, it just feels like the Pathomer video is long-winded. And honestly, while you can read through quicker and quicker first aid, you can go very quickly through it. In the case of Pathoma, you can only fast forward the video so much, increase the speed, before it starts to sound like gibberish. So there's a limit to how quickly you can speed up that as opposed to uh, first aid. And you can probably more or less get the same information either from reading the PDF of Pathoma uh, in a quicker amount of time or you could get the same amount of information from just reading a couple of sentences from first aid. So by and large, Pathoma is not a bad resource. The person did not do a bad job on it, but it's really not a necessary resource. Something I should touch upon are Anki decks. And I'm not talking about so much the innocuous ones, which maybe are a, a number of, I don't know, a few hundred or something. No, the one, there are ones which are like 40,000 or longer, and I have to say that all of this is extremely inefficient. Having a high number may be comforting to some people because they, uh, they think that they'll memorize all of that. Or for someone who's just starting medical school thinks that, well, it has all the information it needs or it'll make sure I'm an A student.
But the reality is, is time is a finite resource and you're not ultimately getting things most efficiently delivered through this. It tests you on all sorts of obscure things which will never show up on your exam. You should never use any resource that is not geared towards, you know, written from the perspective of providing you with the information you are actually going to be tested on in the exam. You can just present everything possible that you'll be taught in medical school. This is not really efficient. Everything needs to be written, and you need to study with the perspective of knowing what will actually show up on your exam. When I actually set about learning the sketchy for the first time, I unfortunately did not do this through the paid subscription, which I realize in hindsight would have been the far better option. What I instead did was I just I used all these basically Anki decks of them, and this was terribly inefficient. I would spend hours on it, of course, like six every day, so you can't fault me for not spending sufficient time. But honestly, I realized if I had just paid the money and just watched them sequentially, it would have been far better. Imagine trying to memorize or learn art from a gallery where you don't actually look at the whole painting. You look at little squares of it. And that is essentially an accurate representation of what it is like to study with these cards. You get thrown random bits of it and eventually you're familiar enough with it so you're kind of able to put together what the entire picture is. Now this is literally true with Sketchy and you can understand why this is kind of a bad idea with that. It doesn't really help to construct coherent memory palaces as well as just watching the damn video. But it's also true generally in regards to the massive decks that I presented to you. And I mean, in terms of keeping your mind refreshed, so what if like every two, every four weeks you happen to have a bit of data presented to you? Honestly, it's not necessarily enough to keep it at the very tippy top of your head, right? Um, so that's the problem with the matter. And what's more is it trains recall versus recognition. I know this may sound odd, but the test is really much more on recognition. Let me put it this way. With the environment of information and such like that that you have around you during a particular question because of the question stem, you can go and remember things and be able to give an answer to something that if someone had just asked you out of the blue that same day, you wouldn't necessarily know. So. Although it's true most of this is not first order, I have to say honestly the test feels like it's much more a matter of recognition, even if it's, you know, for answering second order questions, than it is recall. And you are studying to pass the test ultimately to get a high score on it, hopefully if you need it. Therefore, however good these things may be to train recall, and it's okay when it's just like a simple answer but when they give you long lists it can take up a lot of time because you keep on repeating it just to remember to memorize that one bulletin point or those two bulletin points that you keep forgetting out of that list if even if these things are good for testing recall the test is really one of recognition so it's not necessary it's not efficient don't use these resources